A truly scalable system is one that can be scaled horizontally. A database is typically scaled by splitting the data across multiple shards. But what happens when a particular shard becomes hot due to excessive load hitting it while others remain underutilized? A classic way to address this is by moving a fragment of data from one shard to another. But how? In this video, we we'll look at how Shopify rebalances the shard by moving a fragment of data from one database to another without incurring a downtime. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year and a half now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue at all. Instead, a small focused group of 50 to 60 engineers will be brainstorming the systems and designing it together. This way, we build a very solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course is enrolled by 800 plus engineers spanning 12 cohorts and 12 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The course is focused on building systems the way they are built in the real world. We will be focusing heavily on building the right intuition so that you are ready to build any and every system out there. We will be discussing the trade-offs of every single decision we make just like how you do in your team. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toilet balancer to Crickbus's live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale. In all, we would be covering roughly 28 systems and the detailed curriculum split week by week can be found in the course page linked in the description down below. So if you're looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course and the second one is the recorded offering. The live cohort based course happens once every two months and will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to learn and want to binge learn system design, I would recommend going you for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss the systems and its design live with me and the entire cohort. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhani.me slash masterclass. I repeat arpitbhani.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I've also put the link of this course page in the description down below and I'm looking forward to see you in my next cohort. So people can host their shops on Shopify and Shopify uses MySQL as their primary database. And this is what their current architecture looks like. With respect to that, whenever a request comes in, the request hits their front end proxy, which is typically Nginx. From here in this Nginx layer, they have written their routing modules, which routes the request to the corresponding pod. Now this pod, please don't confuse it with the Kubernetes pod. Pod is just a logical grouping of shops which share a common database. So in this diagram, you can see shop one and shop two part of pod one, which share the same database. Shop three and shop four share the other database, right? Now here, these two databases, they do not have any data in common. These are shards, right? So these are MySQL shards, which are running. Now, given this, when the request comes from the front end, to the Nginx, Nginx through its routing module decides where to forward the request to, request goes to that corresponding pod and serves from that corresponding database. Right? Now within this database, each table would have a column called shop ID which help us identify that this row belongs to this shop. Like if you have an orders table, in that orders table there would be, in, uh, in that orders table there would be a column called shop ID which tells that hey, this order belongs to this particular table. Now. When a shard becomes hot, which means let's say there's a huge amount of load coming on shop one, which makes this pod one hot. Because of this, the database which was shared between shop one and shop two is now really hot, right? Because a lot of reads and writes are going to this database. So how do you handle this? Now this one shop becoming hot might make this entire pod affect, which means if there are hundreds of shops hosted on the same pod, they are all getting affected because of workload on one. So what do they do? They would have to move the shops from one pod to another. So moving API servers is pretty easy. You just shut down server over here and you add over there because it's stateless. But what's stateful is the data. So how do you move data from one database to another without having a downtime, which is what makes it extremely challenging, but fun at the same time. So a normal approach to think about it is, hey, let me just iterate through all the tables of my database pick the rows with a specific shop ID and I move this rows from one database to another database. What's the problem? 
the problem is downtime because a shop can have huge number of rows while it is having huge number of rows and let's say the migration is going to take one hour you can't just say ki, hey my site would be down for one hour that's not gonna happen right so which is where without incurring any downtime you have to move data from one database to another which is what makes it really interesting problem to solve so next like why do we need to move first reason that what happens when a shard becomes hot like this is like if if nothing could happen if rather nothing would happen when there is an excessive load you can just say hey why do we even need to care but two critical reasons why you would want to move data or you would want to move shop from one pod to another first reason is that the risk of failure due to over utilization here we clearly see that if there is a huge number of requests coming on one shop it would make this database piping hot which means that there is a chance there is an increase in probability of this fragment of infrastructure failing which you should not let happen because one shop facing this excessive load takes down other shops with it is unacceptable right second is inconsistent database utilization across shards primarily you see that while one shard is operating at 100 percent capacity while others are just serving at 10 percent 5 percent 2 percent you don't want that to happen you want near equal distribution of load across your infrastructure so which is why we think of hey let's do rebalancing of shards such that the load across all of my pods is fairly equal okay so the first problem comes how do we decide which shop lives in which shard now this is where it becomes interesting or rather interesting per se but more about what all factors can you consider while you are making this decision so this is typically done by the data science team because their job is to crunch data to apply those models which tell you that hey this shop this should move to this shard this shop should move to another shard right so the factors that you might consider that the first normal factor that you might come to a conclusion that hey let's just move it with respect to the number of shops in a database isn't that a straightforward way to think about it that hey let me just split every database handles 100 shops but that's not good because when you do that it's very much possible that there might be a pod which is handling three or like many hot shops which means shops which are very resource intensive they are being hosted on one shard you don't want that to happen right so which is why you apply heuristics to see ki, hey where which shop can move to which shard few things that you can consider you can consider historical database utilization which would tell you ki, hey uh, this is where this shop should lie this is where this shop should lie this is the basic this is the pattern of utilization of this particular shop so this is the best place for the shop to be otherwise you can look at historical traffic that you see and more importantly you can use forecasting because let's say there is a shop which calls you and tells you ki hey uh, we are having a big big flash sale so we would want uh, so we, we are expecting this much of traffic given that you already know that these folks are going to have a flash sale it's better to be prepared so you would just move their shop to a isolated place so that their flash sale can go really well right so there are lots of factors you cannot just converge to one so it's heuristics of all of them it just basically playing around with weights and see how do you move here and there which is what makes it really interesting that given that you might be doing it frequently frequently does not mean every minute but frequently definitely means once every few weeks given that you might want to uh, redistribute your load across pods which means that your process needs the process of movement needs to be automated in second without having any downtime right? okay so now let's come to the elephant of the room uh, how do you move the shops so few critical constraints that we have to definitely be uh, be be wary of that we cannot break first that the shop must be entirely available which means that there should not be any any perceivable downtime in the shops right so no matter what happens no matter where you are moving data no matter how good you are making their infrastructure or their performance downtime is not expected because it would impact not only your revenue but your customers revenue and that's more important second there should not be any data loss or corruption because you cannot just say hey because i moved the data from one db to another and then you're like i just missed few rows that cannot happen every single row is critically important you would want to keep it as is right you have to ensure that there is no data loss no matter what third is that your movement should be seamless enough that your movement should not be 
it, it should not be expensive enough that it puts burden in your own database or on your own infrastructure right so these are three critical constraints that we would have to operate on so then this entire problem statement of moving shop from one to another can be broken into three phases the first one is we do batch copy and tailing of bin log we'll go through it each one of them in depth second is to be prepared for a cutover and third is updating the routing table right so do it step by step and in general almost all such systems are built step by step so we'll go with the first step and see how these sort of baby steps help us achieve what we would want to do so phase one batch copy and tailing bin log so here let's go one by one so what shopify does so uh, shopify has built a tool called ghost ferry uh, it's open source you can find it on github uh, source code is pretty simple it's written in golang so it was very easy to skim through but i would highly recommend you to check that out and uh, yeah by the way all of this thing whatever i'm discussing is taken from shopify's engineering blog which i've linked in the description down below highly recommend you to check that out right okay first step the most or uh, the most basic one but really important one so first step is you do batch copy you do batch copy of data from one db to another db we know that every row in the table has a shop id as one of its column you iterate through all the tables pick the rows that has a specific shop id and you write them into another database in a transaction this way you ensure that there is a bulk copy happening from one db to another you might create like you might just have a process or a machine that is just basically iterating through the tables and copying and pasting the rows over here right while this batch copy is happening you like this batch copy obviously while this batch copy is happening there are new updates which are flowing in the main db it's like you have not stopped the incoming traffic through this db the new requests are still hitting the db so from db1 when you're copying the data to db2 your db1 is still live it is still handling a lot of incoming requests that are coming in so which means that when you start copying you also have to keep track of whatever new changes are coming in into this db how do you do that which is where cdc comes in which is where uh, bin log comes in so given that they are using uh, mysql uh, mysql the right ahead log file of mysql uh, is called bin log you can keep track of coordinates within the bin log on how do you do uh, on which point did you start copying and these are the new updates so all the updates that happen in the db they go to this bin log and it's really easy to write a parser for that or there are tools available as well which you can go through which contains events that happened on the database so for example if there was an event on orders table in the db you, so you would have something like this insert order and the and the values of the columns then update orders and the value of the column so these are right ahead log files which dumps which are dumped on every commit of a transaction in this right ahead log file right so from there this would ensure that the first step is ensuring that you are you are batch copying the data from one db to another while you are keeping track of changes that are happening live on the database okay. now where do you put this stuff now here there are two ways to do it either you use cdc and put all of these events stream all of these events in a queue that is one way to do it second way to do it is just make a note of bin log coordinates if you have a higher bin log uh, retention just keep a track of bin log coordinates from at the time at which you started your batch job that hey this was the point when i started my batch job so these are the bin log coordinates up until which when my batch job completes i would have data till this stage after that i would read and apply it there right so this is what you would have to do then here obviously performance optimization you just don't need to have just one thread which is copying the data from the batch copy you can just have multiple threads to do it okay now second step once you say you have made note of that either that bin log coordinate that hey up until this 10 or in case you are using you in either case you would know that you have completed your batch copy till that point right you know that because you will keep track ki hey from this point i am anyway capturing all the live events that were happening so before this whatever i got i need to just do batch copy up until that point otherwise you would be copying it forever you don't want that to happen so you copy till that stage you you apply your for loop until that particular bin log coordinate is hit when you do that which means that now your batch copy is done which means that by at the time when the batch copy started from your first db all of the data is present in your second db right now what remains the things that remain is that you have to copy the new 
things like from the time that you started a batch copy whatever new writes have happened onto the db you have to take and apply it over there right but here a critical thing that you don't just have to apply all the updates but only the updates that are for your shop right so which is what we do we capture filter and apply the changes into db2 right so we start consuming the newer writes that are happening in the db so here what happens is that because the batch copy would be very fast you are bulk copying the data of the shop that you are interested in another db then you are you have kept track of hey, from this point i did it right and then you are starting from that new point and just filtering the events that you are interested in and applying the changes into another db so this way there will be some lag some lag between the new writes happening in the main db and being and that write being updated in another db there would be some gap between the two that is a replication lag you may call it replication lag right but in general just a lag that is happening between them so you would measure this lag that hey how old are my entries there you would keep a track of how old are these entries and if once they hit near real time maybe few seconds one or two or three seconds difference which is when you know that hey now this is small enough for my db2 to catch up so given this what do you do you stop the write on your main db as soon as you stop the write on the main db this is where your small small downtime would might come in might come in you can handle it on the application side so that your end users don't see it as a downtime have retries and what not to handle it right but it should be very small enough hardly 2 seconds 3 seconds at max but you would have those retries in your application like that in case your write fails you just retrying it this way your users would not see any perceivable downtime but you would still have this small cut over phase where your db is not accepting the writes because you are switching the database right so you just have to be aware of this fact that you might need to have retries there right okay so when so here what happened is here we have two things that we did we first did batch copy up until a certain stage from there we started capturing the live events we started applying those live events onto another db right once the difference was few seconds one or two seconds you stop the incoming traffic onto your database or onto your uh, onto your api side and you waited for everything to be going down right so once all the changes that you know because you are not accepting any new new writes once you have consumed everything you would know that hey everything is caught up right once you know everything is caught up so at this stage what is this stage at this stage there are no new writes coming onto the source db and your source db is equal to your target db because the data on both the database are exactly the same there are no new writes coming in this is the time when you make that switch where you enter the third phase and you update the routing table and what would this routing table do this is that that nginx layer in which you have defined a uh, you have defined a custom routing module which says that hey for this shop you go to pod 1 but now it changes to go to pod 2 so when this happens what you would have and here we are just talking about database side because api server spin up is pretty trivial because it's entirely stateless we spoke only about the database side of things so here what did you do you change the routing layer and updated that hey shop one that used to go to pod 1 now goes to pod 2 then the new request that comes in all the new request will come to nginx nginx would say hey it's pod 2 and it would forward that request to pod 2 instead of pod 1 and this is how you do this migration from one pod to another without having any downtime once that change is done in the routing table you start accepting the request and all of the requests for shop 1 that used to go to pod 1 will now go to pod 2 without having any downtime because the database as is basically caught up right so there is no problem there and this is exactly what you do step by step right so first phase is to do batch copy second phase is you enter the cut over you apply all the updates coming in from the bin log third once the replication lag is less you wait until all the changes are caught up because you stopped the writes onto the db and then you are making the change in the routing layer right once all of this is done you start accepting the writes because you can't wait you can't wait ki hey i'll validate and then i'll start accepting the writes because the problem is that you cannot have a longer downtime because it should not be perceivable by your uh, by your customer so on application logic you would have retries but more importantly once your shop moves from pod 1 to pod 2 here what you do your next steps is you have to validate that the data that you have done is proper and then you delete the data from the old db so now your shop 1 has now been successfully moved to pod 1 and this 
is almost automated just obviously you might just need a few engineers keeping an eye when whenever this is happening but this is almost an automatable process not not really uh, like something which becomes extremely complex over time but you would still need uh, a pair of human eyes to keep an eye on in case something goes wrong right but this is how overall the flow happens or and this is how you actually solve the hot node problem or hot partition problem when you would want to move data from one node to another without having any downtime right the steps vary depending on the technology that you are using but overall the flow would look exactly like this no matter what you are using right just few just few cosmetic changes here and there right and yeah that is our and that is exactly how shopify does it all of this again is taken from shopify's engineering blog i have linked that blog in the description down below there are few links that you, that i would recommend you to go through which would cover this entire concept really well but i hope you found it interesting you found it amusing that is it for me for this one i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton